Call of Duty Warzone is a free-to-play battle royale game for PS4, Xbox One and PC. The game has up to 150 players fighting and surviving across a huge map, trying to be the last player or last team standing. It can be downloaded via the PlayStation Network, Xbox Store or Battle.net for PC. The game is cross-platform compatible, meaning that players on Xbox One can play against those on PS4 and PC, with gamepad and mouse and keyboard available on all platforms. Matchmaking does divide mouse and keyboard and gamepad players, however. The game can be played solo or in a squad of up to four people, with trio and quad squad matches available. There's also a game mode called Plunder or Blood Money, along with variations on the Battle Royale game mode. These modes may come and go as the game is updated. This video is to complement our previous video on Call of Duty Modern Warfare, which looked at the full gameplay controls and options, which are also applicable to Warzone. This video will focus on the additional controls required in Warzone Battle Royale mode. The previous video, as well as a game access post to go alongside the video, both go through all the controls in-game for reference. The features shown in our Modern Warfare video such as toggle options, sensitivity settings and other interaction options still apply here. Please watch that video for more information on the controls and other options and settings available. We will be focusing on the console versions of the game. We have tested it on a PS4 using a DualShock 4 controller. We will also mention the Xbox One controls. When you first load Warzone, it may load with the bumper ping control scheme selected. In this video, we will be mainly focusing on the default control scheme, as many players will be more used to this control scheme from playing other Call of Duty game modes. It is possible to change control settings via the main menu and also by pausing the game. The game features several options for practicing, including some tutorial modes and a short practice match versus bots. These can be helpful for learning the basic gameplay mechanics and controls. The Warzone game modes available in the menu often change to accommodate temporary modes, but the Battle Royale mode is a constant feature, often offering solo, trio and quad squad options. At the menu, you can pick to load up either a solo, trio or quad match. As standard, in team matches the game will auto-fill your team to make it 3 or 4, depending on whether you choose trios or quads. If you don't want your squad to fill with people outside invited friends, select Don't Fill in the Squad Fill option. To either invite or join friends, you press Triangle and select them if you have already added them, and if they are online, or you can add friends. This would be Y on Xbox One. Whichever mode you choose, the first thing to load up ahead of the match is a lobby where you can practice shooting against other players waiting to play. Once enough players have joined, the main game will load. In Warzone, up to 150 players compete on a map, aiming to be the last player or last team standing. You start with nothing except a pistol and search buildings to collect equipment and cash. As the match goes on, the map size decreases as gas draws in and surviving players must move towards the safe zone. All players have one life. If you lose this life, you drop your weapon and you get one opportunity each match to win another respawn by entering the Gulag, a 1v1 last player standing match. If you lose in the Gulag or are killed again after visiting the Gulag once, teammates can still potentially buy you back. Squadmates can also revive a player if they have been downed but not killed. At the beginning of a match, you and all other players will be in a plane which travels across a flight path across the map. This can be a good opportunity to look at your TAC map. You can access the TAC map by pressing the touchpad button on PS4. This is the view button on an Xbox controller. You will notice a white circle appear on the map. This is the safe zone which indicates the initial area the gas will next draw in on. You can zoom in and out of areas on the map and can also ping a location on the map. This can show other players in your team where you think would be best to land and can also act as a guide point if playing in solo. 
Only you and players on your team can see your ping marker. Now we will look at the TAC map controls. This is the default layout controls for TAC map. Left stick will continue to move your character in game whilst the map is open. Right stick moves the cursor around the TAC map. Hold R1 to zoom in, RB on Xbox. Hold L1 to zoom out, LB on Xbox. Up on D-pad to ping. This creates a marker that both you and teammates can see. R3 is to delete the ping. This is right stick click on Xbox. L3 is used to move the cursor to player icon. This is the left stick click on Xbox. If you press the touchpad or view button again, you will close the map. Pressing cross or A will cause you to jump out of the plane and you immediately start free falling. Use the left analog stick to move in the air and the right stick to look or aim. Cross or A will open your parachute, which you can do at any time. In the in-game settings, there is the option to have parachute auto deploy either enabled or disabled. If you choose to have it enabled, then your parachute will automatically open once you get close to the ground. If you have this option disabled, you will need to press cross to open your parachute manually. This is A on Xbox. If you do not do this, you will crash land and either need a teammate to revive you or you will lose your first life when playing in a solo match. When parachuting, you can press circle to cut your parachute and return to free falling. B on Xbox. Note that even with parachute auto deploy enabled, you will need to manually open the parachute the second time around, as it will not auto deploy twice. You can also hold L1 to free look in third person. This is LB on Xbox. Once you have landed, you will have a pistol but no other equipment. You will need to gather equipment, and although you may find some items on the floor, it is worth listening out for the sound generated by crates. Crates may have a variety of objects in them, including weapons, kill streaks, ammunition and cash, but rival players will be able to hear them and will be looking for them also. The reload button is square, which also acts as interact. There are several ways in which you might use this button. This is X on Xbox. For example, to open crates, you need to briefly hold the interact button for approximately half a second. This also includes opening buy stations from which you can purchase an extra life for a teammate, kill streaks, or some equipment. Once you have opened a crate, if you decide to pick up a weapon or kill streak, you need to hold the button down for around half a second again to pick up each item. Ammunition and armour can be picked up simply by walking over them. You don't need to press a button to do this, although you can use the interact button if not directly over something. You will also need to use square, holding it for approximately half a second, to pick up tactical and lethal items, kill streaks, perks, and to swap weapons. To open a crate, you need to hold the interact button for around half a second. If you need to revive a teammate, you need to hold the button for around 5 seconds. You can also drop equipment. In team-based modes, this can be to share with teammates or to make space to allow you to carry other items. To open the menu, hold down on the D-pad and use the right analog stick to cycle across to the item you want to drop. If you are dropping something you have in multiples, such as ammo, you can press the triangle button to drop some, or press the square button to drop it all. This is Y and X on Xbox. Although you can usually just walk over ammo to pick it up, to pick up anything that you have dropped back up, you will need to press the square button. This is X on Xbox. To put on an armour plate, hold the triangle button for around half a second. This is Y on Xbox. Although when you see armour, the game tells you to hold square to pick it up, you will also automatically pick it up by running or walking over it. If you lose your first life within the game, rather than it being game over, you get one chance to win your way back into the game. The Gulag is a 1v1 match which you must win to continue playing. If you are playing a solo match, the Gulag is literally your last chance to keep playing. 
In the team modes, however, if you lose, you can spectate your team, and if they collect enough in-game currency, then they can buy you back into the game. Once in the Gulag, you usually start in a waiting area where you can watch other players fight whilst waiting for your turn. If you press R1, you will throw rocks. This can be helpful if one of your teammates is currently fighting as it can distract the opponent. This is RB on Xbox. You can also punch other players in the waiting area using L2 and R2. This is LT and RT on Xbox. If you lose a life and win in the Gulag, you respawn. Gameplay in the Gulag controls the same as it does for the rest of the game. Once the match starts, it is 1v1 last man standing. However, other players may throw rocks as a distraction or to injure you from the waiting area. In team modes, if you have lost both your life and your chance to win in the Gulag, you can request a redeployment. You do this by pressing up on the D-pad, which will highlight the nearest buy station. Providing they have enough cash, teammates can purchase your re-entry into the game and you will respawn. You then re-enter the game by parachute. Driving the majority of vehicles such as quad bikes, jeeps and trucks all have similar controls, with R2 to accelerate, L2 for brake and reverse and left stick for steering. This is RT and LT on Xbox. The right stick can be used for looking around and pressing cross allows you to swap seats. That's A on Xbox. Holding square for a moment will enable you to exit the vehicle. That's X on Xbox. Helicopters control differently, with R2 to ascend, L2 to descend, left stick for steering, and right stick to aim the direction. This is RT and LT on Xbox. If you are a passenger of a vehicle with a teammate driving, you can aim and shoot at opponents using the standard controls to do so. Many thanks for watching this video. For a more comprehensive look at Call of Duty Warzone controls, please check out our Modern Warfare video. If there's anything that we can do to help make gaming more accessible for you, then please do get in touch.